In today's video, I want to show you how I built this highway with blueprints and you can download them for free. So if you remember in season two, we actually built a highway that went around the world. Well, we've done the same with this one, but this time I prepared for the train chaos, the vehicle chaos that we're about to receive in this playthrough, because you better believe we're going bigger than last time. But there is a slight catch to the blueprints because as of right now, as of the 3rd of October, there is currently a bug and it's a hologram bug that is a collision issue with blueprints. So what I mean is right now we are at a beautiful, nice little um, solid, you could say 60 FPS because I cap it my game at 60 FPS and it's nice and buttery smooth. But let's say, for example, this blueprint right here, I grab a little bit of rail and now look what happens. I suddenly start getting crazy fps and that is due to a hologram collision bug right now so it kind of happens when you can kind of see it here um it doesn't happen if i was to get this rail for example and if i'm not looking at the blueprint which is over here you can see how smooth it goes again but when i look at the blueprint it starts going a little crazy and a little fuzzy yes they are aware of it i have put it on the qa site it is like i think the the top uh bug report that is um up there right now but i'll put a link in the description if you want to put your if you want to upvote it or if you want to put some additions to it as well so that is a little bit of a warning before we go into today's and you download them and then you're wondering why your game has suddenly lost fps it's due to the collision issue with the hologram so you have been warned but hopefully that is now a mandatory fix in the works when hopefully in this next couple of weeks. Hence why I've not worked on the priority train line down here and completed the hypertube that goes through the middle. Just because with me doing this on the live stream and the marathon and stuff, it's just, uh, it, it's just a pain in the ass and it's making me sick to <laughs> try to place these rails or the hypertubes because I'm constantly losing FPS. So I'm going to try to do my best to avoid it, but I need to show you some of these blueprints um, whilst I'm deleting. So it might get a little framey, but if I go to blueprint mode, you can kind of see what is kind of occurring. We have different blueprints um, that all come together and uh, I built many, many for you. And I've even done the supports as well. Just to be frank, there is no up ramps or down ramps because I find it easier to honestly build them yourself for adaptability. All I'm doing you, all I'm doing is gonna give you the modules for you then to work on yourself. Just so you don't have to do the repetitive jobs over and over and over again. But before I go ahead, I wanna give you a massive thank you for the love and the support on the previous video. You guys absolutely killed it. Not just here, but you killed it over on all the other socials. And uh, you guys seem to really enjoy this building. I, it is one of my little pride and joys, and it's, uh, a lot of you guys are saying, Bits, why are you wasting mercy spheres? Well, funny story. Originally, I did spawn these in just to see what it'll look like. And then because I liked it, I actually went out and collected 12 mercy spheres and removed them from the game. So originally, I did spawn these in just to visually see it what it would look like with them because i didn't have enough at the time uh this was on the live stream by the way and um yeah and then we decided you know what i kind of like them here so i then went out collected some mercy spheres and then trashed 12 mercy spheres just so i'm not bringing anything in via creative mode but yeah a lot of people um have had speculations if this is modded mods are not updated yet as you know the ssm is currently being updated to 1.0 but just to clarify this whole build is done in vanilla everything was built by hand you can see all minute by minute hour by hour day by day it took us 69 hours to build and uh, again thank you for the love and the support that you guys are showing me on this series so again as always if you enjoy the videos remember to like subscribe and also leave a comment and let me talk to you about these blueprints so I've got, a, I've got a little bit of an open gap here, and this is what this video is going to be about today. I'm going to be talking to you about the blueprints, I'm going to, and that is going to be it. There's not going to be gameplay advancements, no future builds or anything like this. So the first blueprints we have, we have um, the uh, highway section. So we have things called 5L highways. We have 3Ls, we have 1Ls, and something new that I've introduced in this blueprint compared to season two is platforms. And what I mean by this is you can see there's a five length platform, a five length with tower, five length with ads, because I know you guys love ads. So what I mean is if we look at this one, this is ads with tower. 
And if I put this down, and uh, I can actually let me let me quickly uh, get, get it and place it. You can see what this is. It is a five length by five. It is it is done in the Mark II blueprint. Just to clarify that these are done in the Mark II blueprint. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people was like, Bits, um, can I unlock this? Like at the end of the day, when you unlock trains, you're going to unlock the Mark II blueprint. It's in the same tier. It's in the same phase. So uh, you can see it's literally a platform system. So if you wanted to do train rides, if you wanted to do all that kind of stuff, and then there's even, you know, some advertisements here that you guys can play around with. And these are just basically kind of like, you know, call bits free on 40, 2069 for free. And uh, yeah, do you like rusty spoons? I like rusty spoons. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one's obviously got a power tower. And if I go into here and then grab this and then hold E and let's go just with ads this time. And then if we press R, make sure you snap it to blueprint. You can see that this one has no tower. Like I said, these are all module. You can edit, you can delete them, you can share them, do whatever uh, and whatnot. That actually needs to be changed because I was testing something. So this shouldn't be here when, eh, when you guys get this because I was testing something, but it should be like that instead. Uh, but as you can see, there's no tower in this one as well. There is more ads. Uh, and this whole um, blueprint system uh, is uh, is very intricate. And it's a lot more, it's a lot better. It's designed to have two trains on either side, whichever direction you want to prefer. I prefer left, but it depends if you which side you're looking at, if it's the right direction or not. Um, <laughs> and then downstairs, there's the option to have the uh, a train system down here i'm going to be utilizing this for a priority train system where if i'm going to be sending anything for example bottled water to a power infrastructure that requires all that kind of stuff um just so you guys know if you've never played with blueprints before you cannot attach um that you, you can't put the rails down um the reason i say this is because as much as i could put a rail here like this and then go to the end here and put a rail like this. If I was to put a blueprint attached to this with the uh, with this right here, they will not attach. So just so you are aware, you cannot put two blueprints together. No belts, no pipes, no power cables, no rails, uh, all that kind of stuff will not attach. Even hyper cannons, hyper tubes as well. Uh, but you might notice there is no hyper tubes on these blueprints. That is because um, I've actually created a um these to kind of be like junctions for you to jump off so if you're going through the hypertube it's a place for you to come off you can adapt it if you want to and put the hypertube in but if i just remove these two real quick the way you would want to utilize these and let me get rid of that is when you're coming down the highway you can kind of see it over there in the distance is you will want to go into blueprints and you'll want to put uh five lp start which is five length platform start and the reason it's called start, it has one simple function. So if we just aim it in the correct direction, uh, let me actually put it over this side. It'll be easier. Boop. Like that. And then if I just go into blueprints and I go into 5L, let's say with tower uh, and platform, uh, what this is, is just a five. I just locked that in place somewhere. Uh, if I just lock that to this and have it face that way, what the 5L tower with platform is, it's just a tower like this with a custom uh, tower. The reason being is the one with the tower was way too low and would cause issues uh, in regards to uh, clipping the trains. So I built a custom platform here for you to jump on and jump off when need to. And there is a non-platform uh, variant as well. But the way this works is, as you can tell, the hypertube actually goes through the central uh, power tower. And when you're building this, if I just grab myself a transport and I grab myself a hypertube, you can kind of see it connects to here. So you will have to manually add all these because like I said, you cannot connect logistics or hypertubes and all that stuff together via blueprints. So imagine you're just coming down the highway and this is why it's called start is because it's got a hypertube exit here for you to jump onto this platform. And then let's say, for example, there's going to be some kind of clip in here. Let me just a another blueprint, which is let's say platform end and that will be platform end which is this one i'm going to attach this one to here like so ignore the current clipping of 
the, the crazy thing down there. But let, let's say you jump off here because this is where you're going to get off or you might want to jump into a factory. But let's say you want to go back down the highway again. Well, all you need to do is just come down here and I've even got an entrance ready for you to connect your next uh, length blueprint. Uh, so all you need to do is go into here and then go into, uh, you know, your platform tower again. Uh, let's say, for example, place that down there like this. And then you just connect up. Eh, where is it? the hypertube again to go from there you will unfortunately need to put down an entrance as well the reason i say this is because i did try to add it to the blueprint but for some reason the entrance was actually overlapping the edge of the blueprint uh the blueprint maker so it was it was it was it was colliding with the uh, boundary so i couldn't actually add it so just a reminder that you will need to add them to there so let's say you're running down here like i said you will also need to change some things here like this right here Right, you can see that these are connected. If you wanted to, you can just go into here, like so. Grab yourself a catwalk intersection. Place that one there, place that on there, and just allow that one to clip through there like that. And now you've got a walkway that comes all the way through, right? Obviously, I can't do everything for you in regards to this blueprint. I, I would like to at least try, but it's this is the you know the best way I can kind of do it because it's better to be module than you can adapt as a pioneer to the blueprint so you can come up here and then you can jump into here and then continue shooting off and the platforms like i said are basically there for hyper tube exits for you to jump off if you're riding a train uh, and whatnot and so forth and then you can have just some funny commercials you know on these platforms also what is this because there's no such thing as a parachute in the game i am a non-believer <laughs> Right, let me delete all of these. And I'm, I, I, to be honest, I should have done this in creative mode uh, just to show you all this because my inventory is going to be getting full right now because I'm going to be pulling everything from my dimensional depot. <laughs> but I am taking from inventory first, though. So. But let anyway, let me get rid of these and then uh, we'll talk about curves. So in regards to curves, there are many ways of doing it. You can also blueprint curves, but the only reason I've not done that is because I prefer to build them myself. So I want to be just giving you what I do and not something I don't do. So the re that's the reason there is no blueprint curves. How you, how you do the curves would be what modules. This is where the other variants of sizes come into your curve, precisely the one length ones because we have one lens, one length with pillars and lights. So as you know, there is a method to my little madness. And if I want to turn right, you build on this side of the, the curve. If you want to build left, you go here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, because I'm going to be doing a five length. And we're going to start here. This is how I do my curves. I'm going to show you the way I do them because I'm just old school, but I'm going to show you a new way that makes it easier for you as well. So what I do is I go into here, I grab a catwalk intersection and I place it right here on the bottom half left of this foundation. If I'm turning right, you want to place it on the left. And if you're turning uh, left, you want to place it on the right. So we go from here, you then place this right here like so. You then aim at the middle, you're going to hold control and you're going to rotate it five degrees to the right like so. Once you've got that, you're going to grab yourself this catwalk intersection and you're going to place it here. And then you're going to get this foundation again and place it here. Obviously, you can slow down this video, rewind it, then delete these two and then delete these two. Place that one underneath there and remove that. Then, Bob's your uncle, you've got a nice turn. There is a new way of doing this because of nudging. And all you need to do is grab yourself this uh, foundation, you hold control, you make sure that you place this in this corner, rotate it by five degrees and press H to lock it into place. Once you have this, you're going to use the arrow keys and you're going to go forward four steps. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to use the arrow steps to the right because that's where it needs to go is one, two, three, four. You're then going to place that there, then jump underneath. Hopefully you've got a jetpack or a hover pack place that there like this and remove the top one i prefer the other way because i can do it quicker for example i can quickly just go into here build like so like i said i've done this over and over and over again over the many years and uh, just to go and release my hand off the uh, mouse to go to my arrow keys is just not something for me and this is how these work so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to turn this curve a little bit further right now and show you how to turn these blueprints. It's very 
very very simple so let me just extend these curves a little bit further for you and i'll get back to you once i've done that right so the first thing we're going to do is i'm going to put down a first blueprint here i'm just going to make some room for this and it has to be a five length uh, because what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the blueprints i'm just going to grab a five elf tower and platform i like to use the tower and platforms on the corners and there'll be a reason that i show you this and i'll show you that in a second so what we're going to do i'm just going to grab this blueprint i'm going to aim it right here at the side of this uh foundation i'm going to lock it into place and now that i've done that i'm going to nudge it towards me which is going to overlap this foundation like this because this is where the foundation ends and this pillar should overlap this foundation here the reason i say we're going to do this it doesn't matter if whatever direction these are facing they're always going to be going the same direction so this is now a blueprint and then all you need to do is from here to do the curve you're going to do exactly the same thing but with the one l's so you go to blueprints and you then go to one l with pillars with no pillars the reason i've done these variants is simple is because as you can tell with this blueprint we have a light and we have a pillar right here my little rule of thumbs with my own de um, design is i've gone into the blueprints and i put down three l's and these have no pillars so we're going to aim at this foundation you do not add to the blueprint otherwise you're just going to go straight you want to aim your blueprint at this turned foundation that you've done here. You're going to press H and lock it into place. You're going to get that line and that line to meet together. Then pull it towards you by one and place. So what this blueprint is, it is a one length five. So it's a five length blueprint, but it does not have a support in the middle because you're not going to want a support with every um, turn, right? You might not want lights with every turn, but what I do is I grab one, and I, I use it in three increments. So I put three down with no pillar. And then the the this this next one here, I'm actually going to use with pillars and lights. So the lights can be consist, uh, consistent. And then you can see we have that. Yes, like I said, the R module. So if you don't want these hyper tubes to be like this, I do recommend removing these second ones so you can still get a nice turn inside the uh, the uh, hypertube but as you can see now it is starting to turn with the current foundation there is other ways of doing turns right and the other ones the other ways you can grab yourself a catwalk intersection for example you can just put this down here you can zoop that you can come to the hen the end and hold control and you can rotate it by five degrees for example and zoop it again then you can get a foundation aim it at the side of this like so and then you can aim at the side of this one and so on so if you want to do tighter turns recommend doing that way but just remember the tighter the turn the more of the stuff is going to clip on the opposite side of the turn so as you can see it's nice and kind of semi flush here but it's not but it's more clipping here compared to other right so if you was to put down a one blueprint um on the other side of where you're turning it's going to be a lot more there's gonna be a lot more clipping right and then these pillars would be sticking out a lot further than what they are doing here with these so as you can see it kind of creates like a jagged turn but if depending on how steep or how um how the turn is you've made will depend on how far they're kind of sticking out you don't want it to stick it too much otherwise your train might clip so now that we've got this what i'll do is i'll come back to the end here and we're going to place this here like so and we are going to now wait until the blueprint actually turns green why because obviously if it's uh, well i say green it's because i've got my hologram set to green when it's not um uh, soft clipping so as you can see right now it's soft clipping so i'm going to press h i'm going to lock it into place and I'm going to lock that into there. And then here, we're going to lock it in again. And we're just going to continue this turn until it goes to green. Because if you go into the gameplay settings and UI and stuff, you can change the uh, green, uh, the UI. So placement. So now this one is green. This is indicating to me now it's not clipping and that we are back onto the straight. So I'm going to lock this into place again, though. But I'm going to place it down just there. And then I can then get this blueprint over here. I'm going to put this down and make sure it's uh, changed my build mode to blueprint. And I can snap this to this here then. Now, this is the reason I use the towers as close as I can before the turn. If you are doing an extremely 90 degree turn with the method I've used here, you might want to put a tower in the middle of your turn. The reason I say this is if you connect a tower to a tower, your obviously your cables are going to, you know, go on a little bit more of an angle than what they would do, right? So I always recommend 
put in a tower at the start of the turn and at the end of the turn and then however increments you 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 want before your next one what i've done in my highway is i've gone into the blueprint and we're just going to copy that and go to the 5l which is 5ls and i place this down four times before i put down another tower okay now that we've got that the reason we don't want to do that is because if i was to put let's say a tower down here that cable is going to cut straight above my head it might be something you like it might not something you like but it's just a question to uh get answered before i get answered that in the twitch streams or the youtube comments and whatnot so next up is how would i go about doing um the verticals if i wanted to go up well lucky for me i've gone around the edge of the map with my highway and it's got it's it's going all the way around here you can see i've already got some trains on it. i'm not going to show you what these trains are doing or why they're going to the spire coast but that is for the next youtube video in in regards to our next progress in what we're making so that is going to be coming up here and it goes around and it goes all the way around and just follows the coast all the way down here it does go in between the um the paradise island and the grasslands the paradise islands is now accessible but the actual um highway comes around here and comes around here it does avoid all the mantas and all that kind of stuff and for me to build the whole highway with my current blueprints um it took me 36 hours on the live streams so it did take me a good day and a half where it was a lot quicker this time because we do have the dimensional depot and i do advise to increase your dimensional depot upload speed and storage space i have a uh, stage four right now i do i can upgrade it one more time and upgrade the speed one more time uh before going ahead and doing this otherwise you might want to get yourself a locomotive storage train which i mean by <laughs> placing your storage down uh and uh putting all your storage on your train like you know your pipes for your rails and all the supplies that these take because they are quite heavy in uh in uh, items uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna not gonna lie to you you know but yeah that's how that works but in regards to like the verticals unfortunately you have to do it manually um the reason is is one i don't need to do them manually uh and um i prefer to do them manually to be honest because it might come in hand in hand with your off ramps and all this kind of stuff how do i build them manually well simple i literally just copy everything i'm doing so if i was to go into just foundations real quick and get myself a, a double ramp two meter this is the one i always kind of go with with heights um because it's nice and smooth in some in, in some instances you might want to use the two there's nothing wrong with using the two uh the only problem is is because these are one meter foundations here you will have this under here but to combat this if you wanted it you can just grab yourself a inverted ramp um like so and then just place that well into that spot by nudging it down by one like that actually no you don't want to under the one aren't you? that one so if you wanted to combat that you can kind of put down the one to kind of bring this and collide this so it's not being a bit weird so now that you've got this where do we go from here well let's say that's the incline we are then going to go along here and this is back to our straight again all you need to do is you just need to follow this method to complete this design so how to do these pillars going down you're going to grab yourself a uh, painted beam you're just going to place it here like so you're then going to aim this at this central line and make sure you change your build mode to diagonal in some cases it might go through the foundation so you might want to select freeform now that you've got it set grab yourself a metal pillar aim it like this and just zoop down like so and now you've got this side being done okay we're then going to do it on the other side so like this like i said i would like to do everything for you but sometimes you've just got to build it i'm giving you a lot of the pieces must be like done for you okay <laughs> don't be lazy <laughs> um so now that we've got this you must be wondering how are we going to get like the railings on here well all we need to do is just grab this foundation we're going to raise this up by one meter like that we're then going to get this for this uh, ramp and we're just going to place this onto this foundation here which we've just placed and we're going to zoop it down to the bottom like that these railings obviously can't go on an angle and neither can barriers there is ways of doing it but it's a bloody awkward uh way of doing it um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use modern railings instead and all we're gonna do is just aim at this and now you can see it's going onto the pillars on the side and that is doing that and then you can just delete this delete this central uh, foundation because we've got the one underneath but now we have a ramp that is kind of barriered right also when it comes to tracks 
you're going to want to do this. The reason I say this, it, it eliminates as much clipping of the rail through the foundation. So when you're placing it, I always, always, always recommend starting your uh, climb from the first foundation end, which is this one right here. And then go from here to halfway through this first foundation. The reason being is if I was to go up to here, you're going to start uh, lifting your track off the foundation way too much and it's going to start look like it's floating. So we're going to place that there. And we're going to do the same at the top. We're going to take this up. I'm going to take this to here and then we're going to take it to the end. The reason I do this is just purely because of turns. Okay. So let's say right at the top here, I am doing an off ramp for this rail and I want to turn left over this track. As you know, a turn needs three foundations forward, one, two, three, and two foundations left or right. So I'm going to place that along there. I'm just going to zoop it. Let's say, for example, I did, uh, I took it to the end here, but then did uh, half here to eliminate as much clipping through the foundation. What is that? <laughs> I'm drunk. Uh, so let's do that, right? So now that we've got that, we already know it's three foundations, but this has now got an extra half here. So that is going to be a problem for me to do this 90 degree turn. But if I was instead to take this and put, rebuild this again, and take it to the half and then place this to the end here we can actually go from here by one two three one two and now if i place it at the end of this foundation we have now got a perfect 90 degree rail now that we've got this you do have to kind of finish this in with your own kind of designs here's the method i use so i grab myself a foundation like this place it here i then get another one here but then i rotate it by 45 degrees i press h and i lock it in and i pull this back by four and i move it to the left by one two like so right and then i'm going to do the same again i'm going to place it down i'm going to lock it into place i didn't want to zoop it like that i'm going to place it here i'm going to lock it into place and i'm going one two three four one two and the only reason I said two is just I want that to go here. If you hold control, you can actually micro change these. You see how the, the jump there? But if you hold control, you actually get half increments. Okay. So that is still not good for me right there. So I'm just going to move it by a little bit to there. Now, you must be wondering, Bits, why should not just use the inverted corner ramps? Well, I don't like using them uh, for these little corners here. The reason being is if I was to do so, and I'll get to the inverted corners, and I was to place that, well, let me get the uh, get the smaller version. If I place that, it's it's a lot easier to put down, but the only problem is I'm gonna have this kind of issue. Yeah, you could use it as a design aesthetic if you wanted to and br bring your foundations down here and whatnot. But yeah, that's the only reason I, I do it that way. It's a bit more work and it's a, uh, yeah, just allow it, okay? <laughs> so now that we've got that, you can just do that for all the same. Of course, you cannot put walls on a 45 degree angle. Okay, so choose your design choice and just get everything and duplicate it uh, with everything I've just showed you on how to do this, right? So get your beams and get your pillars and then put your ramps down and all this kind of stuff. And it's the same for going down, okay? I've shown you the turns and everything now, and I've also shown you most of these blueprints. The next thing I wanna show you that we built in here is I've also built made highway supports. And yes, we've got the colors of the rainbow in here because um, they have signs with different lights on them. Take your pick of which red is. <laughs> well, it says red, but it's also got a red background. So what these are, these are uh, supports. So let me just unsnap and lock that in. So you can see we have an eight in length, which is for obviously if you're building quite high. We also have a uh, four length and we also have a one length. And I, I do recommend putting these into your hot boy. I don't really use the hot boy, but the only reason I say that is because if you have a, because there's so many of them and I hold E, all of these are majority of uh, eight lengths, right? And the rest you can't add because you can't add, you know, a, a, all this kind of stuff. I have to literally use, go into the menu and then press right click to change which ones I want. And uh, just a little bit of a pain. Like you could do it super quick, uh, but sometimes you can't tell if it's a four or a one on all that stuff. Okay. Uh, I always go into here and I recommend putting these onto your blueprints, which I've done down here. And as you can tell, I'm using orange lights for my highway. So let's say you've got an, uh, an 8L. You've also got a 4L. Uh, I don't know why I'm not using the ones on the blueprints uh, on my hot boy right now. Uh, then you got a four because um, really, if you know, if the ground's too close to this bottom of this pillar, a four might fit it well, and you, you're not going to have half of this clipping through the ground. And you might as well reserve some UE objects so you don't hit the object limit. 
um, and then you're also going to have a or uh, a one one as well, just in case you want to micromanage. Yeah, that. And you, you can only see the difference is that there's these lights on the side, which are uh, which are just there purely for decoration and lights. And let's say you wanted an orange one, you you pull up the orange one, and then you can see it's just got orange lights on the side as well. What I would do recommend is if you're not a big fan of the copper or the color tones, load them up in the Mark II blue printer, change the colors before advancing and building because you might not like them. The other reason I say this as well is one problem I've come across and I have regretted it with my design because I've already built the highway around the world, right? My problem with my current blueprint is, and I'm gonna show you now so you guys don't have the problem and I'm going to a bit, it's broken. If you're in a train and you jump out and you're on this outside track, you get shoved between this fence and this train. And it's hard for me to get out, right? So you get stuck. So this is a bit of a flaw with the blueprint. So I apologize. Um, so make sure if you do not want that to happen, just go into um, the blueprints themselves and then change these fences to something else. You could just go into here if you wanted to, and then just go, okay, I want to put it to barrier, aim at that, hold control, and it'll automatically place it like so, right? And just do that in the blueprint for all of them uh, so it doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, it is a little bit of a pain in the ass right now for that. So I'm now needing to use the inner line to make sure that, that doesn't sort of thing happen because it was annoying the crap out of me. The next thing about this highway is I want to show you is how to get on and off on the inner, inner tracks. Because for some reason, I wasn't expecting this as a, a lot of questions. So the way it's going to work is I don't have enough room here. I should give you a better example, but we're already here now. Um, so let's say we've got a ramp coming along here. And I need to get this inner track uh, off to the left or the right because, you know, you got a factory it's going to. So let's just say, for example, you're going to go into here and we're going to build a normal ramp that we have been doing, right? So we're going to take this up by here, by two. And we're just going to zoop that up. And let's say we're going up here. This is not the exact height you want to go to um, because you, you need to make sure you've got enough clearance when you do a left for the trains to make sure you've got enough clearance because you might go over the lights and all that kind of stuff. Once you get to where you need to as a height, you're then going to do what uh, we did before. So we're going to grab the foundation. We're going to go here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Ignore the lights. We're going to be turning left and whatnot. Like I said, change the height depending on your variant. And then like that. Okay. What we're going to do then is we're going to bring the track up. So I'm going to bring this from here. I'm going to place this to the half. I'm going to, and again, grab this one as well. I've got these FPS drops due to this bug. Uh, we're going to place that there. And then we're going to bring that up here. And again, we're going to place that there. Let's say we're going left, which is where we're going to be going, over this way, because that is where my factory is, right? So one, two, three, one, two, which is going to be here. Um, but now that we've done this, we're going to actually want to put the ramp down here. So, uh, so we're going to go here, and then we're going to bring this down by four as well. One, two, three, four. Because I'm just going to do this for the sake of it. Uh, let me just grab that. It's going to clip. Just ignore it. But you can you can get where I'm kind of going with. This is not the best example. And you've got to allow it sometimes on a spoon, okay? That will then come back into this ramp. And this is where this part of the track now becomes redundant, right? So you're going to get this rail. And you're going to bring this across here. And you're going to take it down here, like so. And then this is where if any trains are still wanting to go forward, they will have to go over this little hump. Or if you wanted to, you can take them onto another line and, and so on. Okay, so there you go. That is is how you would do it, okay? And then with this center bar, what I do recommend and what I do is I go into architecture and I grab myself some frame foundations and I just bring these down like so, like this, just to give it some structural support and it kind of fills in the highway uh, and whatnot. What I do in regards to these, because if I was to place that there, it's going to clip through, okay? So I'll place one down on the bottom bit like so but what i'll do instead here now is i'll grab the uh the single frames and i'll just take these up like so until it doesn't clip through you see how that one's clipping through i'm going to place it there and it just kind of fills in these little gaps here like this and uh creates a support so the train will choo choo along here then you might have a train that's coming straight over because it doesn't want to turn left uh, and place it there just remember now also signals um do allow you to snap anywhere on the actual rail so thank you so much, Lim, for adding that. I'm pretty sure it was you. Um, so these can add anywhere. What this does, it allows you to create a split in the track. Because if you remember like pre-update 1 or 1.0, 1 
You had to always place these at the end or snapping points where two rails attached, where now you don't have to. They do have to be, though, one and a half foundations in length. Because what it's going to do is if I was to place this here, it's going to create two different rails now. So it's now created a new snapping point. So if you wanted to use this as an advantage instead of removing a trail, a, a train. So in, you know how normally if you had a train and this was an active line and you wanted to make a turn off because you wanted to adapt your train line before you would have to remove it, extend it to where you wanted to turn to and turn it off. For example, right now you don't use these as cutting as knife little points, right? So now that's attached there. We can now take this and let's say we can bring this onto this track that will come over here, right? So for example, if you wanted to merge these two lines, uh, you would use that snapping point we created and connect it over here, right? You do have to, you know, delete stuff coming through like this and, and whatnot. And uh, you might not want these lights here and all these lights. When I set them, I set to green. So if the lights do come on green, you must be wondering whatnot. The lights are on a separate grid, okay? So all of these lights, all you need to do to connect them is grab yourself a, let me just come over here. Grab yourself a cable and you can see that connection point needs connecting to that connection point, right? They are now connected. So once, you, once you've got all these done, you can put like a, a, a light box in here and just connect it up to one of these. Oh my God, yeah, these, these ramps. This is why I don't use the two meters. Um, so now that we've got these here, just connect a light box up and then you can change all these lights. They're not on the same grid as the power. The way you want to use these power towers um, and what I'll be using them for is for um, power, right? Because as we know, yes, trains do send power from A to B via stations, but I don't want to do that in my playthrough. I want to actually use the towers as a functional power system, right? So I'm gonna grab the cable from here and then I'll take this over, let's say to my factory. This will then go into a priority power switch before it goes into my factory, okay? And that allows me to then be micromanaging my power infrastructure via the power uh, priority switches. So I'll utilize them. Make sure you do not, however, connect your power grid to any of these already established connections. The reason being is if you put down a light switch, okay, and then you were to connect everything, and let's say you've got a nice little factory over in the dune desert, and you accidentally, you know, connect a uh, this power grid to these light uh, switches, these light um, cables, um, you will change the power, the, the lights, if you've got anything connected to that same grid, to that color as well. So you don't want to accidentally change all your lights to one color because of a little error. This is one reason why I've requested so many times that we're able to get colored cables because having colored cables will stop that issue uh, of us being spoons and uh, all that stuff. Okay, so maybe in the future we get that. So I can go, okay, this is a red cable. This is a power, power line. The black cable is a you know, the light switches and so on and so forth. So that, and hopefully we can get that soon. So you can kind of see here, I'm just in fly mode right now. So you can kind of see what is going on and how these kind of junctions will work uh, and so on. And you, you, you'll you use this same method to get them back onto the track, depending on the direction you want to take them. Okay. Uh, and it, it works really well. Um, what I recommend doing with what I've done with my train lines is if I just head over here, we can see that I've got this highway moving through this junction. I kind of done this thing that we did in season two and I really like it. And I've kind of kept the tradition of adding these beams to the, uh, what's it got? It kind of creates like um, NASCAR, like r turning ramps, turning <laughs> turns, right? Uh, but it, I kind of like how it fills in and it kind of gets like a barrier look that you'll see like on like motorways or highways uh, and whatnot. And it kind of brings in some color variety as well. And uh, I really like it and I'll be putting it throughout my playthrough. So with these blueprints now, we can kind of see that we're coming in here. And here's a good example that I'm going to be getting these um, ramps that we've done on these platforms to go into a factory because I can just put a door in this way or whatever uh, and adapt it. And uh, like I said, I've done this here. And this is where a train comes out and then I've attached it along the side of this. Uh, and I'm going to show you now in a second how to attach one grid to another grid, okay? Because that will happen, especially if you want to make something like this happen to connect to the highway again. As you can see right here, this is, some people might ask in the comments, why not put a, uh, a uh, what they called, the, the, the path signal. 
because there's no really need for a path signal when you join merging onto a line you only really need them on a junction and if you want to see how to use train signals and stuff i'll make sure i'll put that in the description also uh, but you can kind of see i've got this rail coming on here and the reason i didn't want to bring it straight out was just in case later down the line i don't want uh you know trains to come down i want them to get a little bit of momentum um and then maybe in the future this rail actually extends onto the actual already existing highway uh, and whatnot so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you a twitch clip i created the other day on how to connect two different grids together okay so it's going to be a bit lower quality enjoy live stream bits explaining this to you because i do get i do get it asked a lot on the twitch streams on how to connect two different grids um so i'll let him explain it to you uh right so now you're going to grab yourself a beam so you go into here and you're going to want to get a beam and aim it at that corner right there and then you're going to get another one and aim it at that corner make sure you're on free form right there and because we are turning right we are going to go this way right so we're going to grab the beam. We're going to hear me here. This is going to be number one, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four. And then change it to default and come across by four. Right? Now done that. Right? Now come across here. And we want to do... Oh. want to do the same on this side. So we're here. One, two, three, four. We're going to go here. Right? We're going to get a foundation now. I'm going to place it on this beam like that. I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to place this side on this beam. Now look what we got. We have now connected both the grids together. So there you go. That's You can see how to connect two different grids. Uh, it's a very simple method. There is other ways of doing it. But like I said, I only show you the ways that I do it. There's many, many, many other ways of connecting different grids. Um, but it just makes sense for me to show you the way I do it. Because you guys follow my content so it, it just makes sense for me to do it that way um because th what i do is gets these results right there might be easier way to get them and all that kind of stuff so all of these blueprints will be available for free in the discord so ignore this weird screen you're seeing right now what you're going to want to do is you're going to press the windows key and r you're then going to go into this folder right here there is other ways before people put it in the comments to get to this folder so type in percentage local app data percentage you're then going to click ok it's then going to open the window you're going to look for factory game which is right here you're then going to go into saved then you're going to go into save games and then you're going to go into blueprints if you do not have this blueprint folder just put a blueprint down in game and just make a uh just save a blueprint you'll automatically get this go into here and then you can see that we have season three youtube it, whatever your season is that you call whatever playthrough you, your name is You'll then go into here and then you'll just pl place everything that is downloadable via the link in Discord, okay? And then when you're in the Discord, go to my section, which is right here, which is under bits, and then go to blueprint downloads, okay? So in here, you can see here's the old Mark 1 highway blueprints. Here's the Mark 2, which we used in Season 2, if you want to play around with them. And here is the overclock water packages thing I did in Season 2. And here is the blueprints for what was made in the previous video in regards to the decoration of the turbo heatsink factory. Um, so these will be added into here. All you need to do is just click the link and then download them all. Uh, and that's all I ask in return. Come and join us over on Discord and uh, see what these guys are up to, which I don't know what they're talking about right now, but say hello to everybody. <laughs> And uh, hopefully I covered everything in that. If not, I will make sure I cover it up in a follow-up video when we do the next um, Let's Play episode. But hopefully you all enjoy these blueprints. Um, it did take me a little time to get them all set up and uh, just enjoy them. Obviously adapt them, change the color of them, do whatever you want with them. Uh, and all I ask in return is show me, uh, send me some images in the in the discord of what you've done with this highway i'd love to see what you've done obviously i've got a lot of work to do because i've still got the pillars to do on this and like i said just remember about the hologram bug please if you're wondering why it's doing this uh issue right now it is a bug it will get fixed it will get addressed by the developers um so yeah enjoy the blueprints and uh as always thanks so much for watching keep smiling and i'll see you in another video <laughs>